So most of us know something about um, Haridas Thakur. It's hard to be around devotees 
very long in the notch. Um, what we know is that he uh, came in a Muslim family and um, that he um, found greater resonance in, um, in the practice of Vaishnavism than he did in the Islam in which he was raised and um, eventually became a Vaishnava, took up the chanting of the Holy Name. Um, there seems to be some evidence that he accepted initiation from uh, Advaita Acharya, uh, with whom he was closely associated. We see, especially in Adi Lila and Mati Lila and Chaitanya Bhagavad, um, um, a lot of association Adiyas Thakur and Advaita Charya, as well as with the Lord Nityananda. And Thakur Haridas was so dedicated to the chanting of the Holy Name that um, Lord Chaitanya would ask him questions. Just like I, I shared the other day, somehow the Giri Raj Maharaj's name came up, and I shared my probably one and a half Giri Raj Swami stories. Um, the first part of the story is really um, sweet. The second, the third half, um, a little mixed, but I'll, I'll share the first half. Um, I hadn't, I don't think I had actually met him personally until a few years ago. I was living in Kansas um, with uh, some devotees at a project called uh, Bhakti Gaon, about 10, 11 miles outside of Lawrence, Kansas. And uh, two, three families um, share a 40-acre property. And um, one of one of the devotees who would come to our programs from someplace in Missouri, I can't remember where she lives, um, Indian American lady uh, named Slapna Vilas. She had received first initiation from Gary Maharaj. Her, I think her first given first name was Satna. So as often happens, they become Swapna something or other. So she was Swapna Vilas, wonderful devotee. So, gosh, so sweet, so sincere, so dedicated. And um, Gary Raj Maharaj accepted her on um, the recommendation of my friend Indranuja, with, whom, with whose family I was staying at the time. My god brother and friend. And, um, and at a certain point, Indranuja Maharaj, uh, Indra, Indranuja Prabhu uh, uh, wrote Giri Raj Maharaj and, and told him that he thought Swapna was ready for second initiation. So when he was in Dallas, he decided to give her second initiation and she invited us to come down. Um, Indranuja, his wife, Lalita Saki, and, and me. And uh, we had, uh, I think it was for the initiation, we had a meeting with Gary, Ma Gary Raj Maharaj at his quarters, and he was so nice. We came in, we offered obeisances, hugs all around, and as appropriate. And um, and then he looked at me, and he asked me a couple of philosophical questions, and I was kind of nonplussed. You know, Maharaj, uh, you're so senior to me. He says, No, actually, I, I'm curious about these things. So we had some discussion. We probably talked for two, two and a half hours, the, three, the four of us. And, um, and it, was a, it was quite a, a nice, uh, it, was, it was such a sweet meeting. He was so, um, he was everything you expect. <coughs> Open, warm, kind, sweet, full of wisdom, full of uh, faith from Srila Prabhupada. And um, it was so wonderful. Later, um, he was so happy about our meeting that later when uh, they were planning a Vyasa Puja festival for him um, in Dallas, he um, asked that Indra and I be invited. It didn't work out, but um, that was his earnest desire. He pressed for it as much as he could, considering his own very soft um, nature. So Lord Chaitanya also asked questions sometimes. 
of Haridas Thakur. So, um, one such instance was um, Lord Chaitanya met with Haridas Thakur and they were having some discussion and he asks, my dear Haridas, in this age of Kali, most people are bereft of Vedic culture and therefore they're called Yavanas. They're concerned only with killing cows and Brahminical culture, and killing Brahminical culture. In this way, they all engage in sinful acts. How will these yadavas be delivered? To my great unhappiness, I do not see any way. And here we get a little glimpse into Haridas Thakur's um, faith in the Holy Name. Haridas Thakur replied, My dear Lord, do not be in anxiety. Do not be unhappy to see the condition of the yadavas in material existence. Because the yadavas, now here he's speaking specifically of the Muslims in, um, in Bengal. Because the Yavanas are accustomed to saying Harama, Harama, they will very easily be delivered by this Nama Pas. So Haram is an exclamation in Arabic, I guess, um, when something is abominable, something is just really horrible, something just really grosses them out. They go, Haram, this is Haram. Mm -hmm. um, so because the, because the Muslims in, in West Bengal, uh, they were prone to condemning all kinds of Hindu stuff as just weird, haram. Um, they said, well, they're always chanting haram. So this is not my boss, and he explains a little bit. A devotee in advanced ecstatic love exclaims, oh, my Lord Ramchandra, oh, my Lord Ramchandra. Haram, haram. It's like to say, ha, ha, probably the way, right? Oh, oh, please. Um, but the Yavanas also chant Haram, Haram. Just see their good fortune. Namacharya Haridas Thakur, the authority on the chanting of the Holy Name, said, The chanting of the Lord's Holy Name to indicate something other than the Lord is an instant, instance of Nama Pasa. Even when the Holy Name is chanted in this way, its transcendental power is not destroyed. Even a Malecha, who is being killed by the tusk of a boar, um, cry and, and who cries in distress again and again, Haram, Haram, attains liberation. Um, Muslims, like many Orthodox Jews, uh, find any contact with uh, pigs um, just revolting, completely contaminating. What, what to, uh, not to speak of being uh, gored to death by a boar. Uh, I mean, that's just like the ultimate indignity for a Muslim to be killed by a pig. What then to speak of those who chant the holy name with veneration and with faith? The Jamila was a great sinner during his life, but at the time of death, he accidentally called for his youngest son, whose name was Narayana. And the attendants of Lord Vishnu came to relieve him from the bonds of Yamaraj, the superintendent of death. The word Rama consists of two syllables. Ra and Ma. These are unseparated and are decorated with the loving word Ha, meaning O. Oh. The letters of the Holy Name have so much spiritual potency that they act even when uttered improperly. And then he cites a uh, verse from the Padma Purana. If a devotee once utters the name of the Holy Name of the Lord, if a devotee once utters the holy name of the Lord, or if it penetrates his mind, or enters his ear, which is the channel of aural reception, that holy name will certainly deliver him from material bondage, whether vibrated properly or improperly, with correct or incorrect grammar, or properly joined or vibrated in separate parts. O oh, Brahmana, the potency of the holy name is therefore certainly great. However, if one uses the vibration of the holy name for the benefit of the material body, 
for material wealth and followers, or under the influence of greed or atheism. In other words, if one utters the name with offenses, such chanting will not produce the desired results very soon. Therefore, one should dil diligently avoid offenses in chanting the holy name of the Lord. Haridas continued, if one offenselessly utters the holy name, even imperfectly, one can be freed from the results of sinful life. Krishna Das Kaviraj Goswami has him citing a verse um, from Bhakti Prasanna to Sindhu. O reservoir of all good qualities, just worship Sri Krishna, the purifier of all purifiers, the most exalted of personalities worshipped by choice poetry. Worship him with a faithful, unflinching mind, without duplicity, and in a highly elevated manner. Thus, worship the Lord, whose name is like the sun, for just as a slight appearance of the sun dissipates the darkness of night, so a slight appearance of the holy name can drive away all the darkness of ignorance that arises in the heart due to great, greatly sinful activities performed in previous lives. Even a faint light from the holy name of the Lord can eradicate the, um, all the reactions of sinful life. While dying, Ajamila chanted the holy name of the Lord, intending to call his son Narayan. Nevertheless, he attained the spiritual world. What then to speak of those who chant the holy name with faith and reverence? Because of even the faintest rays of the effulgence of the Lord's holy name, one can attain liberation. We can see this in all the revealed scriptures. The evidence appears in the story of Ajahnila in Srimad Bhagavatam. Lord Chaitanya inquires further, but um, uh, there, I, I, I do, well, we can talk a little bit about Tapar Haridas. Um, um, we know that um, at that uh, uh, while the Lord was still in Namadwi, uh, Haridas Thakur and Lord Nityananda um, inaugurated a program of going, uh, preaching the glories of the Holy Name door to door. Something um, we did here uh, 50 years or so ago. Um, and, and, and as has been pointed out in some informal discussions, we used a Thomas guide to Oahu. Um, to keep track of every block we covered. And um, we pretty much covered every street, every block, um, in Honolulu, in Wahiwa, in Kaneohe, Kailua, out the North Shore, um, Waimanalo, we, Kalihi. There was a long time when we avoided going to Kalihi because we were a bunch of skinny Howley guys, you know, dressed funny with our heads shaved and stuff. And we figured, you know, a bunch of skinny hala guys running around Kalihi in, in orange sheets and bare feet uh, might cause a little stir. Um, until we actually went to Kalihi. And it was, in some ways, it was so much more rewarding than going to Kahala or Diamond Head or, you know, any of the fancy places. People were nice there. A lot of the people there were really nice in those nice neighborhoods, those, those affluent neighborhoods, or even really wealthy neighborhoods. They would invite us in. They would ask us questions. They would get in, engage in conversation with us, offer us fruit, offer us juice, offer us you know, let us use their bathrooms. <laughs> um, so, um, but the people in Kalihi, their generosity was just, I mean, you know, we would go around begging for rice, but also because we were working on making the original Panchatattva deities, margarine. We didn't ask for butter, we asked for margarine. Because you use margarine to um, coat the mold so the paper mache doesn't stick to the mold. 
and and they were they were just so generous. The people were so generous. And one time, one quick story, because it has to do with the holy name. One afternoon, Balabhadra was going around in the pickup, picking up all the different little groups scattered around this one neighborhood. And the last person we came to was our friend Kamba. Anybody who knows Kamba, he's a wonderfully eccentric person um, with such strong faith in the holy name and Shiva Prabhupada. And he had a group of 8, 10, 12 kids following him, chanting Hare Krishna. And he had tears streaming down his eyes. So Balabhadra pulled up and said, Kamba, we're going back now. And Kamba said, just one more house. Because he would go up to the door of the house and the kids would stand out on the street and chant Hare Krishna. Just one more house. I don't want them to stop. I think we've probably let Kamba do like six more houses before we had, because we needed to be on time for the evening RT. So Haridas Thakur and, and Lord Nityananda also began a pro similar program, reaching the glories of the Holy Name door to door. And probably sometimes it was really cool, sometimes not so much, because it was in the course of such uh, an endeavor that they encountered these two um, creepy brahmanas, um, Jagai and Madhai, um, who, to whom no sinful activity was unfamiliar. And, um, and so we, we know about that encounter. How, uh, now, the thing is, they would go preaching door to door, and especially when they encountered people, especially with Jagai and Madhai. Haridas Thakur, Lord Nityananda was a wild man. Mm -hmm. Haridas Thakur, a little more human. And Haridas would complain, you, you are going to get us into so much trouble. And when it came, especially it came to Jagai and Mada, he said, this is beyond me, this is crazy, this is not going to work. So then you know, we know that um, they did attack um, Lord Nityananda, which aroused Lord Chaitanya's ire. And Lord Nityananda pleaded um, with uh, Mahaprabhu um, to spare them, to bless them, because he says, otherwise, how are people going to know the depth and breadth of your mercy unless you save these guys? Because these guys pretty much represent everybody here nowadays. So um, another. We also know that uh, at one point the Muslim government objected so strongly um, so strongly to um, Haridas Thakur's practice of chanting the holy names and associating with the Vaishnavas that um, he was sentenced to be beaten to death. And they dragged him through 22 marketplaces, 22 bazaars, um, and beat him with canes, I guess rattan or bamboo canes or and at, at one point, the deputies, the guys who've been charged with, with beating him to death, they finally complained to him, man, if you don't die, how do we go back to the Kazi? How do we face the Kazi? We're just, I mean, he's going to kill us. And Haridas Thakur's humility was so great, he said, oh, I'm sorry, I didn't know. And he went into trance and was apparently dead, so they threw him in the Ganges floated down the river, washed up on the bank, uh, was revived, and um, everybody asked for forgiveness, which was easily forthcoming. Um, and another couple of times we know he was tempted once by Maya Devi herself, um, who benefited by his association, another by, um, I would hear you say it, a society lady hired by some local fellow uh, to try to tempt him and get him to fall down. And uh, he turned her uh, into a wonderful Vaishnavi just by his association. And she approached, she would approach him, you know, let's have some fun together. He would say, you make an excuse. I haven't finished my, uh, you know, the counting, uh, chanting of the holy names that I've, that I've given for myself for the day. So when, when that's done, uh, we can certainly get together. And so the sun came up, and he was still chanting. And the next night, the same thing. I think it was three nights in a row. And finally, by her hearing Haridasa's chanting, she took up the chanting. And, uh, he left her. She became revered as a great Vaishnavi, chanting the holy name and worshiping Srimati Tulsi Devi. I don't know if I left myself enough time for this, but I'm going to try.
tribe. Oh, also, Thakur Haridas is identified with Lord Brahma. Sometimes he's identified with Lord Brahma, sometimes with Prahlad. And in Navadvi Tham Mahatmya, Bhaktivinoda Thakur has one explanation of how Brahma took birth in a Muslim family. So in Dwapara Yuga, uh, Sri Krishna was herding the cows through Rajadam in the company of his cowherd's boyfriends when Brahma decided to test the Lord out of a desire to see his majestic form and opulences. He stole both Krishna's cows and calves as well as his friends and hid them for a year in the caves of Sumera Mountain. But a year later, when Brahma returned to Raja, he was astonished to see that Krishna was still there with both his friends and cattle. Brahma immediately understood his error and began to regret his rash, rash action. He fell down at Krishna's feet and begged for forgiveness. Krishna responded by mercifully revealing his divine opulence. He who appears in Dwapara Yuga as Nanda Nandana Sri Krishna descends again in the Kali Yuga as Gauranga, taking on the mood and bodily luster of Radha Rani to display the most magnanimous pastimes. Rama was afraid that he might commit the same offense during Gora's incarnation, so he went to Antardweep, the central island of Navadweep, and began to meditate. The Lord was able to understand his mind and so came to him in the form of Gauranga and said, during my incarnation as Gora, you will be born in the family of Mechas and will preach the glories of the holy name and bring auspiciousness to all the living beings. So, at, uh, toward the end, um, one day, Paridas Thakur revealed his heart to Lord Chaitanya. He said, it seems to me like your pastimes are coming to a close. I don't want to be around for that. Please, somehow or other, arrange for me to be excused from having to witness um, your final pastimes, from having to live in a world without you. And, and Lord Chaitanya said, well, how's that going to work? How can I live in a world without you? So then Lord, the Lord had to go take care of his new um, duties, um, bathing and chanting, and chanting his um, mantras. And uh, so they went back. So the next morning, so Lord Chaitanya arranged that he would come see Haridas the next day. He came to see Haridas every day. Um, because Haridas wasn't um, allowed, because of his birth, wasn't allowed to go to Lord Jagannath's temple. And out of his humility, he didn't even want to be around all the priests and everybody and contaminate them with his shadow or whatever. Um, he stayed away, so Lord Chaitanya gave him a place um, near the beach where he could, from which he could see the um, chakra. At the top of the uh, uh, tower, at the temple, the temple, and um, and he would come. He would come see Haridas every day. But the next morning, after visiting the Jagannath Temple, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, accompanied by all his devotees, went hastily to see Haridas Thakur. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and all the devotees came before Haridas, who offered his respects to the lotus feet of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and all the Vaishnavas. My dear Haridas, what is the news? <coughs> My dear Lord, whatever mercy you can bestow on me. On hearing this, Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu began great congregational chanting in the courtyard. But Grayshore Pandit was the chief dancer. Oh, another thing. Haridas Thakur was one of the main dancers in, among the seven kirtan parties that Lord Chaitanya would arrange during Ratayatra. Headed by Swarup Damodar Goswami, all the devotees of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu surrounded Haridas Thakur and began congregational chanting in front of all the great devotees like Ramananda Roy, Sarvabhama Bhattacharya. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu began to describe the holy attributes of Haridas Thakur. 
As he described the transcendental attributes of Haridas Chakra, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu seemed to possess five mouths. The more he described, the more his happiness increased. After hearing of the transcendental quality of Haridas Thakur, all the devotees present there were struck with wonder. They all offered their respectful obeisances unto the lotus feet of Haridas Thakur. Haridas Thakur made Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu sit down in front of him. Then he fixed his eyes like two bumblebees on the lotus face of the Lord. He held the lotus feet of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu on his heart and then took the dust of the feet of all the devotees present and put it on his head. He began to chant the holy name of Sri Krishna Chaitanya again and again. As he drank the sweetness of the face of the Lord, tears constantly glided down from his eyes. While chanting the holy name of Sri Krishna Chaitanya, he gave up his life air and left his body. Seeing the wonderful death of Haridas Thakur by his own will, which was just like a great mystic yogi's, everyone Will, uh, everyone remembered the passing away of Bhishma. There were tumultuous, there was tumul a tumultuous noise as they all chanted the holy names Hari and Krishna. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu became overwhelmed with ecstatic love. The Lord raised the body of Hari Das and placed it on his lap. Then he began to dance in the courtyard in ecstatic love. Because of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's ecstatic love, all the devotees were helpless. And in ecstatic love, they also began to dance and chant congregationally. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu danced for some time, and then Swarup Damodar Goswami informed him of other rituals for the body of Thakur Haridas. The body of Haridas Thakur was then raised onto a carrier that resembled an airship and taken to the sea, accompanied by the congregational chanting. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu danced in front of the procession, and Bhakreshwar Pandit, along with the other devotees, chanted and danced behind him. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu bathed the body of Haridas Thakur in the sea, and then declared, uh, from this day on, this sea has become a great pilgrimage site. Everyone drank the water that had touched the lotus feet of Haridas Thakur, and then they smeared the remnants of Lord Jag Jagannath's sandalwood pulp over Haridas Thakur's body. After a hole was dug in the sand, the body of Haridas Thakur was placed into it. Remnants from Lord Jagannath, such as his silken ropes, sandalwood pulp, food, and cloth were placed on the body. All around the body, the devotees performed congregational chanting, and Bhakreshwar Pandit danced in jubilation. With his transcendental hand, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu personally covered the body of Haridas Thakur, chanting Hari Bol, Hari Bol. The devotees covered the body of Haridas Thakur with sand and then constructed a platform upon the site. The platform was protected all around by fencing. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu chanted, danced and chanted all around the platform, and as the holy name of Hari roared tumultuously, the whole universe became filled with the vibration. After some kirtan, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu bathed in the sea with his devotees, swimming and playing in the water in great jubilation. And then they all circumambulated his tomb, and Lord Chaitanya declared a great um, festival um, for the, the disappearance of, of Thakur Haridas. So this is how dear Thakur Haridas was to uh, is to Lord Chaitanya. And this is how hmm, affectionate Lord Chaitanya is to his devotees. Uh, that he actually allowed Thakur Haridas, even though it wasn't his own desire, to, um, to give up his body before his final pastimes were enacted. And because yesterday uh, we also marked the the appearance of, of Bhaktivinoda Thakur, I thought it would be um, appropriate to share a poem that Bhaktivinoda Thakur wrote um, that he called Anhari Dasa Samadhi. And it's the, the next to the last stanza is very well known to all the devotees. But 
What may not be as widely known is that there's a whole poem with ten stanzas. Oh, born of Muslim parents, Haridas, and trained in youth in Muslim creed, thy noble heart to Vaishnav truth did pass, thy holy acts the candor plead. Is there a soul that cannot learn from thee that man can give up sect for God? That thought of race and sect can ne'er agree with what they call religion broad? Thy love of God and brother soul alone bereft thyself of early friends. Thy softer feelings oft to kindness prone led on thyself for higher ends. I weep to read that Kazis and their men oft persecuted thee, alas, but thou didst nobly pray for the wicked then, for thou wert Vaishnava Haridas. And God is boundless grace to thee, O man, united thee to one who came to save the fallen souls from evil's plan of taking human souls to shame. And he it was who led you all that came for life eternal, holy, pure, and gave you rest in he heaven's endearing name and sacred blessings ever sure. The body rests upon the sacred sand of Swargadwar near the sea. Oh, hundreds come to thee from distant lands to enjoy a holy, thrilling glee. The water roars and storming winds assail thy ears in vain, ah, Vaishnav soul. The charms of Vrindavan thy heart regale, unknown the wheel of time doth roll. He reasons ill who tells that Vaishnavas die when thou art living still and sound. The Vaishnavas die to live, and living try to spread a holy life around. Now let the candid man that seeks to live follow thy way on the shores of time, then, pos then posterity sure to him will give, like one song in simple rhyme. Shri Thakur Haridas. Namacharya Haridas Thakur Jai. Shri Haridas Thakur Jai. Thank you so much. Go.